Um, obviously watching all of his replays and he, he's, he's a little go get him sort of horse but um, in the Lion City Cup he just he, he led had a little bit of pressure the first furlong and he, he just he didn't relax a hundred percent how I'd like him to but I think with the blinkers coming off I think he'll do that for me. It's been a nice horse for Corey Brown to get on so early in his short stint here in Singapore and a horse who ran second last year Mr Big blinkers coming off he was beaten by super easy last time but uh, both the Freedman representatives I think it's fair to say are uh, the uh, top two of the locals as they head towards the cruise flyer. Yeah, we've got uh, track work of uh, Super Easy and also Mr Big and uh, we'll show you the, the Lion City Cup. That was a, a really top performance by both horses in the Lion City. Uh, Super Easy, he's been our best horse, I think it's fair to say, for the last uh, 16, 17 months, uh, Larry? Certainly. Uh, I think the Longer? owners of Better Life might sort of question yeah, that. But, but he's, he's got the record on the board. She's the emerging talent, isn't he? He has. He probably could have raced in this, uh, this race last year, um, but I think they were, they were steering away from, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Rocket Man, who didn't run, but they, they won the Guineas, which was a terrific result last year for the horse. Terrific horse. I think Mr Big and him will be right in the finish. Mr Big, yeah, he went fairly hard in this. The blinkers have been taken off. I'm hoping he relaxes a little bit better. Super Easy is very strong. I just thought Mr Big might be in a slightly better position when they turn for home in the big race. Yeah, you've got a soft spot for him. And, and we made the point before the Lion City Cup that these two, remarkably, given they're the same age and, and you know race over the same sort of trips, had never met before. Freeman had kept them apart. That was the first time they met. Super Easy 1-0. But you're happy to go the other way with Mr Big? Yeah, I think so. I think he's got a great chance in the, the race. As we work through them, we're going to have a look at uh, Belmont Mar now and this guy comes here with pretty good form he was uh, placed second in the uh, the golden shaheen that was the race that rocket man either won or was placed in the uh, the previous three years um how's he going do you think uh, edward line and the the trainer very happy with the way he's traveled over here well it's all the t all the talk about this horse is uh, the surface really um belmont Mast. here he is in the golden shaheen not on the grass as you can see I went through his record, he's only ever won on the grass once and that was a £4,000 race at Navin in, in Ireland. But all his form, Larry, really, his, his best form has been on the poly track, including this terrific run in the Golden Shaheen. Well, not the poly, this is to Peter, of course. Yes, yeah, certainly. And also, <coughs> the fact that he's been pretty consistent in his sprints, so you know you're going to get a, you know, if you're, if you're having a little bit of the race, it's a great each way horse because he's been there behind Ronaldo the Wizard and also a mental the Australian horse. And you know the Australian uh, sprint form holds up. Yeah, he's obviously got a, a good constitution as well because he, he was in Dubai, went back to Ireland and then from Ireland has to take a ferry back to England then fly out here. It's not an easy task but yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the trainer are very happy with the way he's come over. So. Yeah. Uh, so he'll be, be a longer price runner, I would have thought. Yeah, I'd say so. Now, yeah. uh, Doug Watson has got a couple of runners in the uh, the big international races, so that's a, a good achievement in itself. Uh, in the sprint, he trains Duck Scholar. Scholar, perfect barrier draw, gate number one. Yep, uh, shortest way around there. I, I think we're going to drop out. You know, he probably doesn't have the pace of some of these horses, so um, not drop out, but I think we'll be dropped out just from the, the pace factor in the race. So. Um, you know, I think, you know, if we find our gaps and, and get through there, he should run a big race for us. Pretty well the work's done for the week now. Are you happy going in? I'm very happy going in with him. Uh, he shipped well and, uh, you know, he's eaten up everything. His coat looks great and uh, seems very happy in himself. So pleased with both of them. Finished just a little way off, uh, Mr. Big, in the uh, the straight race in Dubai, did Duck Scholar. But a winner prior to that, and he has campaigned over more ground. This will be his first run for Doug Watson, and uh, he's pretty happy the way he's coming along. Yeah, so Mr. Big probably suited up to the 1,200 metres, but this horse even more so, as you say. He's campaigned up over 2,000 metres in the past, so getting up from the, the five furlongs to the six, a big advantage for him, and he has drawn particularly well. I think his track work's been quite good. We saw him on the the turf during the, the week, and he seems to be hitting out quite strongly, Larry. Yeah, and I mean, obviously the form behind behind Shay Shay is what we can look at um, given that Mr Big was in the same race and I think that uh, Craig that goes back to Mr Big running a big race here I think because that form will hold up I think. For sure um, this guy's gone back to, uh, to Ireland since then so uh, he's back here to um, Singapore now this is the El Nabuda Trophy thousand metres this was his win nice little horse and um, yeah, he's an interesting runner I think I, I haven't put him in the top four I must admit but uh, you could quite easily see him running a good race here. Interesting, he's got the Russian jockey on board. We don't get many Russian jockeys. Uh, speaking to Frosty, uh, our old friend Frosty, um, he didn't know that Russia had racing. We're talking, the, mm. he won the Russian Derby, etc. And it's, so it must be a... We see a few jockeys rushing a little bit in races <laughs> yeah. here, but uh, not Russian jockeys. But uh, yeah, that's the, the situation with him. What about uh, Kavanagh? Uh, Mike DeCock, 
I'm, I'm really disappointed that he couldn't get Treasure Beach or a Gugu here for the uh, the cup. I was really looking forward to that. But he's got Kavanaugh. Uh, track work during the week looked uh, looked reasonably good. I thought the track work was excellent. Um, it was it was very strong. It was one of the first ones sort of putting in some sort of hard yards on the Tuesday. And you can see it there is um, keeping the straight line, which we talked about on our previous track work, work show. And uh, I think he's, he's going to run a big race. He's got very similar form, hasn't he, to a Duck Scholar. They, they were competing in similar sort of races. And here he is on the turf over there, Kavanagh. Um, and he was able to win over there. Um, last time he was at the races, he was in the Gold Jaheen, and Duck Scholar actually beat him past the post. But uh, uh, no, in fact, Duck Scholar ran in the, um, the Elkwaz. Who am I thinking of? Uh, but anyway, they went. They came through the same race. Um, the mental race. The mental race. That's what I. That's what I'm thinking of. But um, uh, what's what's the assessment, Larry, from the uh, from the track? Do you think through the course of the week? Is well, he, is he one of the better is, workers? Or? Yeah, he's not. He's not an out and out sprinter. Yeah. He's uh, he's not an out and out sprinter, and they and they know that. But this is the race for him, and um, it's it's a million dollar race, and they've got him here. And as Craig said. There was a couple of other nice horses that were coming here through the De Kock stable, but it's good to have one a South African entrant. Um, huge owners. It's going to be a it, it'd be a big day in South Africa if this horse gets up. Yes, and Trevor Brown, who's the travelling forward with the uh, foreman for uh, Mick De Kock, when he drew an inside gate, there was a smirk <laughs> on his face. He was pretty happy. I think he's uh, happy with this one. Now, Dashi Gogo, this is the most interesting runner, I think. He, he's not quite uh, Lord Canaloa, his stable mate, who we all know. But he was only two links off him in the replay we're about to show, and uh, the Japanese horses are just so good as we know. Yeah, so he's drawn a little bit wide on the track, but um, he's got a, a good burst of speed. I was listening to um, or reading an article about this horse, and they were making comparisons between him and Lord Canaloa, and really, as far as who the best was, there was no comparison. But they did say that this horse has a really quick turn of foot over a very short period of time. We're going to have a look at him here. The Japanese camera work is... Famous, atrocious, atrocious, atro yeah. famous, and uh, here he is. He has run some big races. He's never been able to crack it at the really big level, Larry, but he's never been too far away, has he? Uh, I think he's, I think he's a real strong winning chance. The fact that he's been racing in you know such good company, Japan racing is at, at a different level. You mm. see when the horses go down to Melbourne. You see when the horses come here. And uh, I think the sprinter can win it. Yeah, well they don't okay. uh, they don't bring too many sprinters here. They're, they're a staying sort of nation, mm. but we know. You know, when we go there, we took Rocket Man a few years ago, and uh, they're just so very, very good. So, although he's not their best, he, he might just be good enough to, uh, to win might. this race. Time for selections for the Chris Lai International Sprint, and uh, I'm going to go with Mr. Big. I'm, I'm thinking he might just have the credentials and might be uh, quick enough to be on the speed in the early part and might just be able to get away with the Bell Sprinter, Gash, Dash a Go Go, and Lucky Nine in the great race. <coughs> Larry. Dash a go go for me. I'm sticking with the Japanese uh, to beat a couple of locals. I think the horse that passes Mr. Big Late will probably win it. Whether that's super easy or dash a go go, I'm not sure. And uh, Lucky Nine, I think just just quality. Um, if he runs, you know, anywhere near his best, he's got to be in the mix. And but I've left out Cavanaugh, and I didn't want to. So it's a, it's a big race and Bell Sprint. Bell Sprinter. It's a tough one. I'll go Lucky Nine to beat Super Easy, Dash a go go, and Bell Sprinter. But it's very open. No sure price favourites here. Shimon Daily News going with Super Easy, the reigning horse of the year, and the other one bows chiming in with Lucky Nine. OK, so a great start to the uh, the international day of racing there with the Chris Fly International Sprint. Though the Cup is even better, so stay with us back very soon to have a look at the Singapore Airlines International Cup.